Hi everybody, here is another history lesson from this book. So remember that we talked about the Roman Empire starting to fall apart. And the first thing they did when it started to become obvious that Rome, the whole empire was too big for one group of people to be in charge of was split it into two parts. And this is about what happened to the part that didn't completely go away. So the Roman Empire was divided into two parts. The part of the Roman Empire that still had Rome in it was called the Western Roman Empire, and the rest got called the Eastern Roman Empire. That's the part we're going to talk about today, the Eastern Roman Empire. The capital city of the Eastern Roman Empire was called Constantinople, and Constantinople was down in the area around the Mediterranean Sea by where Greece is today. So when barbarians flooded into the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire fell apart. That's the part that turned into where England and things is now. The Eastern Roman Empire lost a lot of land to the barbarians as well. It shrank and shrank and shrank until the Eastern Roman Emperor only ruled the land right around Constantinople, right there in that one little area. But it didn't completely go away. The Eastern Roman Empire survived just in this tiny little spot for a while. Today, we call the last surviving bit of the Roman Empire a new thing. We call it the Byzantine Empire. And we call the people Byzantines and their emperor the Byzantine Emperor. So it's kind of like this little scrap of Rome got so different since the rest of Rome went away that we switched and gave it a new name. It came from the Roman Empire, but it changed enough that it had to get its own name, so it makes sense when talking about it. And we call that the Byzantine Empire now. Now, it was really little at first. Remember, just that space right around Constantinople, because all of the invaders had taken away so much of the land. But there were some emperors of the Byzantine Empire who decided, no, I'm going to take some of that. So they started to reconquer some of the land that had once been part of Rome, and then the barbarians overtook it, and they started getting it back. Eventually, they did this so much that the Byzantine Empire spread to all around the Mediterranean Sea, which is a pretty big area. Constantinople, the capital city, became the biggest city in the world at that time, and it was larger and fancier and richer than Rome had ever been it surpassed this thing that it came from. So imagine that you're walking through the road in Constantinople. The ground, the road that you're walking on would be paved because the Byzantines knew the Roman way of making good roads out of rock and cement. And if you walked through there, there would be millions, a million people already in this one city, even though this is back in time when there weren't as many people in the world, there were a million people in that city. Some of them were dressed like Romans, wearing togas, which are like these white robes that are draped across one shoulder and then have a belt in the middle. Some people would be wearing other clothing because this was a town that had gotten people from lots of different areas. There'd be shops selling silk and jewelry and all kinds of food. And you wouldn't see many children out on the road. Not really any at all, because the Byzantine Empire had a rule that all children would go to school. And they had free school, so it wasn't just school for the wealthy children, it was school for everybody. They learned to read and write and read the great books that everybody read, written by the Greeks and Romans. And you wouldn't see kids out running around in the street in the middle of the day, because they'd all be at school like that. And what the really cool thing is, I think, when you imagine taking a walk through Constantinople, is there wouldn't be one big fancy palace. There would be 14 big fancy palaces in Constantinople. The emperor had five palaces. The ladies of the court had six palaces. And then there were three leftover palaces that were just for the people who worked for the emperor. Like all of his guys who did his work had their own palaces, three of them. So if you walked around town, you'd be like, oh, look, there's a palace, there's a palace, there's a palace, there's a palace. Might be a little bit hard to navigate, given that there were 14 different fancy palaces. <clears throat> Pardon. I lost my train of thought. Bring it back. 
So Constantinople is this crazy city that existed for a long time, got really big, really fancy, and all came from this one tiny scrap of the Roman Empire that didn't completely get deleted and taken over by the barbarians when Rome started to fall apart. Constantinople isn't called Constantinople anymore. Now it has a new name, but that is a story for another day and possibly a song for another day if you've ever heard that one. For now, maybe think about if you had 14 palaces, how would you divide that up? What if McMinnville had 14 palaces? How would you divide those palaces? Who would get each one? Or maybe you'd like to go check out a map and look and find where the Mediterranean Sea is and look at where this teeny tiny town took over and spread out to take back this whole area. Maybe you just wanna to listen to this one. Whatever you decide to do, have a good day. Know that I miss you and I'm thinking about you and I'll see you soon, bye.